The longsword is one of the best weapons in Monster Hunter, and no, I'm not afraid to say it. Everybody likes to hate on this weapon because it's one of the most popular weapons to use for beginners and experts alike. Some people just like to hate on it because they think it's a weeb weapon. Well, newsflash, I'm a weeb, but you don't see me using this thing all the time. Although I do like it, so I don't know, maybe that's telling. All jokes aside, the longsword is one of the greatest weapons in Monster Hunter, but why? For starters, the longsword is really easy to use. It has really easy combos that you can pull off, but also has a really high skill ceiling for using it at an expert level. On top of that, this weapon has extremely long reach, making it capable of severing tails and hitting high monster parts such as the wings or just being able to connect with the monster if they're, well, a tall monster. And not being one of the top damage weapons in the game, it still has extremely great damage for the mobility that you provided and the reach of the weapon. It's an extremely easy weapon to build around as well, as it only a few skills in the game affect the playstyle of it, such as the skill focus. And like I said a moment ago, it's a very mobile weapon. It's mobile at all times, it's still dealing great damage while moving around the hunting area. It has a very fun and unique mechanic, and actually one of the more simple mechanics in the game, the spirit gauge. The Spirit Gauge allows for extra damage through momentum, allowing for even bigger damage through extremely sick looking attacks. video I'm going to be going over the longsword and why it's one of the best weapons through a simple guide in the training area but I'm also going to be getting into a couple builds that you could try out if you're looking to get into this weapon. We'll have a build for the early game, the middle game, and the late game of Iceborne. But enough about why the longsword is so great, let's head over to the training area. Getting into the basics of the longsword, the longsword has uh, one of the easiest combos in the game to pull off. All you need to do is press triangle, triangle, triangle over and over again, and why, 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 if you are on Xbox. This is a great combo with a really long reach. Great for severing tails, especially with the overhead slash. It's a continuous combo that'll follow the same pattern every time. If you press the circle or the B button, you'll get the standard thrust attack. This can actually lead straight into the same combo if you press triangle again after that. Other standalone attacks of the longsword consist of what is known as the fade slash. This is a great move that allows you to retreat and attack at the same time and you can do it out of combos. What's nice about this move is that you can actually move to the left or right while you do it but you cannot do it as a standalone attack. What I mean by that is that if you fade slash normally, you can only go backward. You can't do a directional input at all, but if you do it out of a combo and hold left or right on the stick, you'll go to the right or swipe to the left as you need. But again, you cannot do it as a standalone attack. As you may have noticed, the gauge in the top left is filling up when we do standard attacks. That's known as the spirit meter and is the main mechanic of the longsword. How much of this gauge you have dictates how much of the spirit blade combo you can do. This is a combo that is done by pulling the right trigger on any controller that you're using. And you can press it over and over again to complete the whole combo. Pressing the right trigger further in that combo will allow us access to the round slash. The round slash is the main mechanic of the longsword that powers it up. This is a move that automatically sheathes your weapon, and as you see, we now have a white rim around our spirit gauge. The color of the rim around our spirit gauge dictates how much damage we're doing. White being the lower amount of damage, it's still a damage boost compared to no rim at all, but it goes from white to yellow to red. If we follow the normal patterns of the longsword and just continuously do normal attack combos with the triangle or Y button to fill our gauge, and then utilize it using the spirit blade combo, we can increase the gauge's color. As I said before, with the color of the gauge, it dictates how much damage you're dealing with the longsword. You really do get a damage boost at, just by attacking with this weapon. It's it's pretty sick, honestly. <laughs> but as you see that the gauge is uh, it's decreasing right now at a very rapid pace, the higher the uh, color of the gauge is, red being the maximum, the quicker it decreases. If that decreases all the way down, it'll turn back into yellow. The way to increase it again, though, is we need to do the same pattern as before. 
It doesn't slow it down until we land the round slash, though. Rather, it actually fills it all the way back up again. Man, this thing takes a lot of sharpness. So if you want to use the longsword on a beginner level, it's as simple as pressing triangle or Y over and over again, and then pressing the right trigger over and over again as soon as you get your gauge full. Giving you a white rim, and if you continue this pattern, you'll get all the way up to red, and that'll just increase your damage further. What's nice about this is that you can do some of the simplest and most basic combos in the game that actually still have a really wide reach and long reach and stuff like that for hitting tails. But what really is nice about that is you don't have to commit to any big attacks, meaning that you get to keep the color of your gauge. But if you want to take your game a little further, we have an attack known as the Spirit Thrust. Whoa, pretty good damage, right? The Spirit Thrust doesn't do anything by itself if we don't have a colored rim around the uh, Spirit Gauge, but as soon as we do have it, utilizing it gives us a really powerful attack and the Longsword's most powerful move in general. The finishing attack you saw is known as the Spirit Helm Breaker. The best damage comes from the red rim border around your Longsword's Spirit Gauge. The only drawback of this move is that it expends one color level on your spirit gauge, but that's the payoff for, well, getting your spirit gauge up. The only downside to this attack is that you spend one color level of your spirit gauge to get the attack to, well, perform. White going to, well, no color at all. And if you're at red, it'll drop down to yellow, and yellow to white, and then white to no color as you saw just now. The face slash, as we talked about before, can go straight into a move known as the Spirit Jumping Slash. I don't know why it's called Spirit Jumping Slash, but I mean, it says it right there, so I don't know, whatever. But the Spirit Jumping Slash actually acts as the first part of the Spirit Blade combo. So if we keep mashing Trigger after that, we'll get straight into the finisher of it. Another way into the Spirit Blade combo is by doing a running jumping attack and pressing the right trigger in the air. It's not really a shortcut by any means because it still does two swipes like as on the ground But if you're jumping in the air and you want to do that, you can do that instead The last normal attack with the longsword is known as the foresight slash, but I actually wouldn't call it normal, I guess This is a move that utilizes iframes but only as your hunter is moving backward your hunter will always follow up with that slash moving forward again. Using the fade slash improperly results in us getting attacked. Using the fade slash properly and getting the iframe invincibility trigger will actually allow you to go straight into the spirit round slash without the use of any meter. God, that looked like it hurt. Jeez. Another use of the jumping spirit blade is you can kind of cheese monsters. If they're on a ledge right here, you can do it over and over again from one ledge. But note that this does require at least the white color sharpness. I don't know, this is kind of disgusting. Speedrunners use this a lot during like Fatalis and stuff actually. So do not underestimate this attack. The last of the basic moves of the longsword besides the Iceborne expansion moves comes down to the sliding attacks. If we press triangle normally, we'll get a jumping rising slash, which we can follow up into a jumping slash. That's useful if you don't have any meter, I guess. But the more important version of that combo is after the jump rising slash, we can go straight into Spirit Blade 2. Into Spirit Blade 3, into the round slash, of course. But if you want something a little quicker to ensure that you do get the round slash, you can actually press the right trigger as you're sliding to get the aerial draw Spirit Blade. Straight into the round slash. Pretty neat, actually. I don't see a lot of longsword players use it. I guess it doesn't deal as much damage in the long run, probably, but um, I don't know. It still looks sick, am I right? But if you don't have any meter, you can't follow up, so, I mean, I guess that's kind of an issue. Other than that, the Iceborne expansion added a move that's actually a couple attacks in one. This is known as the Spirit Special Sheath. You press the right trigger and the A or X button together at the same time, and your character will go into a sheath stance. Note, you cannot roll out of it or do anything out of it besides pressing triangle or Y or the right trigger. The great thing about this is that we can go into it from virtually anything. The follow-up attacks are pretty simple, but do have a little bit of nuance to them. If we press triangle or Y after it, we'll get a double slash known as the EI slash. 
This is a move that can be followed up with a combo afterward if you want. Like normal. But what you may have noticed is that the spirit gauge is now shining red. This means that it's going to continuously fill up over time. As we expend our spirit gauge, it depletes like normal and doesn't increase. But if we do the EI slash after the special sheath, it gives us a special buff for a limited period of time that'll automatically increase our spirit gauge. Pretty neat attack, and honestly, you should be using that a lot. This is a move that looks like the spirit round slash, but actually acts a little different. It'll expend a level of your color gauge to deal good damage. It also has iframes at the start, I meaning it could be a very, very defensive move in the right circumstance. Now that we've covered most of the moves of the longsword, let's talk about a couple of things that you can actually do with it that aren't very intuitive, but are very useful still. First, you can actually draw attack with Spirit Blade. This is nice if you want to skip a step of going straight into this, into Spirit Blade. It's a lot quicker if you look at it. What's also nice is that if you don't have enough spirit meter as you see up there and you start performing the spirit gauge, you can actually press triangle in the middle of the spirit gauge combos. Starting like this, I don't have enough probably, but if I do a couple attacks and get it kind of full and do these intermittently, I can have more than enough at the end. Finally, the longsword's about putting it all together uh, at the same time, but what's really nice is the combos are actually pretty easy. It's just doing the finishing moves that you have to know the buttons for. Otherwise, it's pressing triangle, triangle, triangle over and over again into right trigger. But after we complete our wide slash, we can go straight into the special sheath to increase our spirit gauge uh, continuous meter fill up. We can do the intermittent combo thing to also do that. And we can get some really good damage by pulling off the EI Spirit Slash. And we can even go straight into the Spirit Thrust. If only I didn't miss that! Alright, let's try it again. That's what I'm talking about. That wraps up the simple guide on the longsword. Let's take a look at some of the builds that you can use through the early game all the way to the end game of Iceborne though. Starting off, we have one build here. It's called the longsword starter build. This is a build that you can make relatively early in Iceborne. Um, that's the theme with these three builds. This one's kind of an early game build. This one's kind of a middle game. And this is kind of a late game when you're fighting the elder dragon such as Valkana. Starting off with the starter build, we have the Iron Eschaton 1. There's no element tied to it or anything. It's just a strong, raw-hitting longsword. Along with a Handicraft Charm 3, this is something you should be able to make at the start of Iceborne. Um, at least you have access to the monsters to create this charm. Starting with the Greaves, though, we have the Beotodus Greaves Beta Plus. This gives you two points of earplugs. Um, it's also a very good piece of armor with the defense, especially early game. It also comes with a level 4 slot. Next we have the Bio Coil Alpha Plus. We're using the Alpha here because the uh, decoration difference in terms of slots is a lot better here than the Beta because we get two points of earplugs as well and two points of health boost. This is actually a really good piece of armor that a lot of people don't use. And I think it's super underrated. Next we have the Kulu Van Braces Alpha Plus. Comes with critical boost and two level one slots. And we also have Pro Transporter. Uh, again, this is a necessity of, uh, it's not really a necessity, I guess. Using the Alpha is just a lot more uh, preferable over the Beta Plus here due to decoration slot differences again. The Pro Transporter is just like an extra bonus. The Kulu Van Braces Beta Plus comes with, uh, I believe only one decoration slot on it. And I think it might be even a level two, but you literally miss out on the whole decoration slot, so. We go in alpha here. Next we have the Bone Mail Alpha Plus. This is kind of like one of the best armor pieces in the early game of Iceborne. Uh, two points of attack boost and one point of health boost with a level two slot and it has no negative resistances. This is a super good piece of armor if you're just starting. 
Next we have the Jagras Helm Alpha Plus, uh, two points of speed eating, one of the best utility skills in the game, and attack boost level two as well, with a level two slot and on it to boot. Taking a look at the decorations, we have a lot of simple decorations here. You may not have a lot of these yet, but what I do suggest is at least having a level three decoration of earplugs here. I have an earplugs divine blessing decoration here, but that's not completely necessary. The main point of this build is to get your attack boost all the way up to level six with the earplugs up to level five, combining with the uh, piece of armor to give you your earplug skills and then just filling it in down here. And we also get health boost level three out of this armor set without having to put in any decorations by ourselves and health boost is the best defensive skill in the game. And then of course we have some tenderizer jewels for weakness exploit and we have some attack jewels to get our attack boost up. Not quite to level 7 but this is an early game build so good enough. We also have two expert jewels up here to get us a critical eye level 2 just for a little extra affinity and critical boost 1 is just to get us some extra damage with our weakness exploit. Overall this is a solid build that boasts a whopping 785 attack power with some extra white sharpness on top of it with our handicraft and some good affinity to get you started. Next we have the Longsword Intermediate build. This is an armor set consisting of Brachidios and Glavinous Armor and Zamatagarin as well, and it uses a Glavinous weapon. This is a build meant to uh, shine when you are able to take on these monsters, I guess. Starting with our Longsword of Choice, as we said before, we are using the Glavinous Spada 2. This is a really good Longsword, has a really high raw damage. It doesn't have any affinity on it by itself, but it also has 270 fire, so really good Longsword. Next for our charm, we have the Master's Charm 3. This shouldn't be too hard of a charm to make. It's not fully upgraded or anything like that. It's just a level three as it is. Coming down to the Greaves that we're using, the Glavinous Greaves Beta Plus. It's the only piece of Glavinous in the set besides a weapon. Comes with uh, two points of Handicraft on the level four decoration slot. Next we have the Autogaran Coil Beta Plus. Critical Eye level two, a level four and a level two decoration slot. This is a super good piece of armor and I highly recommend you make this. Even back when this game first launched, this is one of the best pieces of armor you can make for the middle to end game and it still remains a really good piece of armor. So consider it if you're trying to get into some better builds. Next we have the Brachidios Braces Beta Plus. The rest of this armor set is the Brachidios Braces to get us the uh, Brachidios Essence uh, raises the maximum level of the Agitator skill. We'll go over that in just a little bit here, but that's why we're using all Brachidios from here on. Comes with two points of level two Agitator, uh, one point of Blast Resistance, kind of just a token skill in here, but it comes with a level four slot as well. And with the male, we have a level four again with one level of Stamina Thief and some more Agitator. And of course the Helm, uh, Brachidios Helm Beta Plus, two points of Agitator, a level four and a level one decoration slot this time. But the point of of these pieces is to get us the uh, agitator secret as we talked about before giving us level seven of the agitator skill is super super important this is one of the best offensive skills in the game even late game even though we're in the intermediate build for the long sword level seven while active grants 28 extra attack value and increases affinity by 20 percent very, very good skill. Um, this is one of the best skills you can use, especially if you can stay on top of the monster and flinch shot it over and over and wall bang it and all that. Uh, the monster is gonna be enraged a lot and all the time. So this skill is just like always active. Coming into decorations, we have some of the same decorations from the previous build. Um, we have the expert jewels here, and we actually have a fortified jewel in here as well. But most of these jewels are something that you might not have in this point. And if that's the case, you don't need to focus on these level four decorations. Don't let people tell you you have to min max because you probably don't have the decorations to fill it out like I, I have right here. So what I would suggest is I'd actually get rid of uh, any decorations that aren't health boost. Health boost is, should be your number one priority in every single build. Um, unless you like to live dangerously or you're just a pro or an expert or a speedrunner, uh, health boost is it's not to be trifled with. It is an extremely useful defensive skill and I cannot stated enough but otherwise if you want to take a look at the decorations or take a screenshot you can just pause the video right now last but not least we have the long sword late game build this is a late game build not an end game build End game is even further beyond this but at this point you should be able to take on Velcana and make most of the armor set which is what we're going for here for the weapon of choice we're using the black tornaya this is the uh, namiel long sword it is a super solid long sword it doesn't boast the highest raw damage by itself um, only coming in at 924 uh, for end game long swords but it gives us 15 percent affinity by itself and it even has 270 water which is pretty good for a long sword for the charm we're using the handicraft charm 3 again just a really good charm obviously you could get this up to uh, level 5 handicraft if you upgrade it enough but uh, this is a late game build 
build and we're assuming you haven't done that yet for the greaves this is one of the best armor pieces and the uh, base expansion of iceborne um, this is what everybody was using back when it first launched uh, before we got uh, new monsters and power creeps on armor equipment but this is the garuga greaves beta plus it comes with a level four decoration slot and two level two decoration slots on top of that we have critical eye level two and it has really good defense too these greaves are uh, just absolutely broken honestly they did get power creeped as i said though before next and for the rest of the armor build actually we have the rhyme gourd coil beta plus and as you see we have the van braces the mail and the helm but starting with this one we have a level four decoration slot and a level one comes with one point of flinch free um the flinch free is kind of a token skill but flinch free is actually really good in a team setting coming in with the van braces we have quick sheath level one and another point of flinch free a level four decoration slot on the mail we have the quick sheath level two and level four and a level one decoration slot so we have all of our quick sheath and these two pieces right here which is super good for honestly i think any weapon uh, especially heavier weapons um but uh yeah very good stuff level four and level one decoration slot and finally we have the rhyme guard helm beta plus this comes with two points of divine blessing a level four and a level two decoration slot uh, we're using all four pieces of elkana though to get us our velkana divinity two pieces of elkana gets us our critical element of the velkana divinity increases elemental damage when landing critical hits and that pairs perfectly with our black tornaria with the water damage that we're uh, inflicting with 270 next we have the velkana divinity level four an aura of frost builds when your weapon is sheathed, raising attack. Wanes each melee hit or shot fired. Uh, this is a part of the Frostcraft builds that people like to make. Uh, it's exclusive to Velcana armor, although you can get this from some Safi Jiva and game equipment as well. This is one of my favorite playstyles in the game. Frostcraft is very, very fun, and it's a unique exclusive mechanic tied to the Elder Dragon itself. So uh, very, very cool stuff. For the decorations, again, you could probably pause the video to take a look at what I'm using here. But uh, the main point of this build is we need all of our health boost and we're just trying to jack our critical eye and critical boost and weakness exploit as far up as we can. All the affinity that we have here pairs really well with our Velcana Divinity. Uh, the more critical hits we're landing, the more elemental damage we're doing. And while water element might not be useful in every situation you're using, this is still just a really strong longsword build that's dealing high uh, raw damage, even just with the water damage uh, just tacked on as well. But as I said before, we're using critical eye we're getting our health boost up critical boost weakness exploit uh, we have handicraft level three um, that is coming from the charm that's just kind of extra uh, and like i said before for these level four decoration slots if you can't slot these in here i at least uh, recommend slotting in your vitality somehow you can even use a vitality charm if you have to and get your health boost up that way uh, otherwise if you uh, can slot your vitality in then go with the handicraft charm or something like that or something to get your critical up so that you can focus on your Velcana divinity as we talked about before. Overall, the longsword is one of the best weapons ever introduced in Monster Hunter. It's actually a really old weapon to this date, but it still holds up to this day. It's really easy to use, has a really high skill of sailing, has extremely long reach, capable of severing tails and all that, all while boasting really good damage. It's really easy to use at a beginner level, like I said before. It's also really mobile at all times. You kind of just dance around the battlefield while doing your moves though. It's it's a super awesome weapon that uh, it just really flows well. That's the point I'm trying to make here. If you want a weapon where you feel like you're actually dancing with the monster or just playing the game and flowing like perfectly, I think the long sword is like great for you that or dual blades and the spirit gauge is one of the best weapon mechanics in the game um, it's tied exclusively to the long sword as all weapons have their exclusive mechanics but it's really easy to use you can get your damage up just by doing some of the simple stuff but you can expend it as you want and kind of really play around with it however you like you can keep your red level damage of the spirit gauge or you can expend it using the spirit helm splitter uh, it's really up to you and it's i don't know it's a really awesome weapon mechanic but generally overall, Longsword has a very fun moveset while being strong and very mobile and culminating in one of the best weapons ever introduced in Monster Hunter for everyone. Anyway, Longsword, super broken. And there's a big crowd that likes to shame Longsword players, but uh, I don't believe in that. Honestly, the Longsword is like really good for pro players. It's really good for beginner players. So just use it, just use it. Who cares what people say? This weapon is awesome. I love this weapon. There's nothing wrong with this weapon, and uh, I think more people should embrace it, honestly. There's a reason why it is the highest used weapon. 
But that's all for today, guys and gals. Uh, this has been a fun video for me to make, personally. I like the long sword a lot. It's a fan favorite, as well as a longtime favorite of mine. But besides that, are you trying to use the long sword? Have you already been using the long sword and you just wanted to check out what I had to say about the video? Or do you have another favorite weapon that you like to use? Or maybe a weapon you'd like to see a video on in the future? Please let me know in the comments down below. I try to get the most comments and I take them all into consideration for my future content. And if you haven't already, I humbly ask you to please consider subscribing to the channel. In the next couple weeks, I'm going to be hosting some Safi Jiva sieges live on YouTube and stuff like that. So if you're interested in that, I'll be making some posts and you might want to be updated on that to know when it's going to be live. But that's all for today guys and gals hope you enjoyed the video i'm signing off this has been terroriza and i'll catch y'all in the next one peace